Are you considering a large platform printer to put to do resin printing with? Well, today, join me as we unbox the Illigoo Saturn S and get that thing added to my work group. Now, here too, you'll also see the Illigoo Mercury Cure Station. We're not getting it out of the box today, but stay or stick around because we'll do an unboxing of this one too. I'm really excited about this group too. But let's get in there and take a look at this printer. Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, as I said, we are looking at the Illigoo Saturn S. It is a large platform printer. It is similar in size to the Photon Mono X. It has a nice bigger size build plate for resin. And as you can see from that box, it's a big printer. But it's one of those things with a, with a resin printer, you also want to consider a wash and cure station, which is what this one is. This is the Mercury X bundle. So it is actually two separate stations that one is curing, one is cleaning with either isopropyl alcohol in the tank or denaturated alcohol, which is what I actually use. But I'm gonna use this one to test out IPA alcohol and kind of see how that affects the resins in the cleaning process. It may be a complete disaster, I don't know, but I've seen people do it and I'm curious about it. But today we're only focusing on this big guy, but stick around in two weeks you guys will see this cleaning station and we'll get even more information on it. And if you're curious to see that, make sure you hit that like button. Let me know down in the comments that you're curious to see this cure station because resin, while it is curing a lot of the, it's curing and forming the model. There's a lot of resin left over and stuff that you have to clean off afterward. Um, get it cleaned up. That way your detail is fully revealed because let's face it, resin is sticky and the cleaning station makes a good, safe way for you to clean those models up and then curing station it rotates it cures it does a good and they're 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 a good thing to have for any resin printer you get so we're going to set this guy off to the side for that video and we definitely want to be careful because it is it is fragile just like this one it has a big old red fragile sticker on here so this one is comparable to the photon mono x this is the saturn s which is a 4k version and i'm really excited to get this one out of the box and actually get playing with it because coming up, I want to pit this thing against the Photon Mono X. The Photon Mono X, once you find the settings, it's a good printer. But finding those settings can be very difficult. The default settings that come in like Shinto Box and stuff like that, way off. Even their own slicer software is pretty way off depending on what resin you're using. And with the Anycubic Photon Mono X, I've learned the Anycubic basic resin is about the best stuff I can use. So I'm really curious about this one. I'm really kind of hoping it is easier to use. And right now on a lot of websites for resin 3D printers, this guy is kind of in the top of the game. So definitely one to keep in mind and consider. If you're curious about it, there is a link to my Amazon affiliate link for this printer down in the description down below. So. Before we hop in and get this guy out of the box, if you're new here and you're curious about 3D printing, learning about 3D printing and all that fun stuff, make sure you subscribe. Join the crew, because everybody matters here. If you have a question about 3D printing, comments, something you want to see from the channel, comments. And make sure if you do enjoy the video, hit that like button, so that we know we're doing a good job and putting content out that you want to see. So, let's get this thing out of the box. All right, taking it out of the box. This is a, a resin printer, so we've got LEDs, we've got lighting, we've got all kinds of stuff in here, LCDs and stuff that we gotta be careful of that we don't damage. So take your time, go slow. Now I was just looking at the initial packaging of this, because my box got pretty beat up on the way here, but looking at the packaging, there are a lot of safeguards in here that are to protect this printer. So I'm really actually, Compared to some of the other resin printers that I've had shipped here, this packaging is really, good, really good. So um, it's definitely protected the printer because um, looking at how the box showed up, the printer definitely needed it. So of course, foam is always good. Kit bashing, always good to keep some of these pieces around to make a base. So don't always throw this stuff away. And as we look at it, there she is. Nice, big, beautiful printer. So I'm actually going to take the box down to the ground and let's start pulling out the parts. So we've got the Illigoo toolkit, which usually has a lot of goodies in it. I'm just opening up that kit and looking the usual 
Snips, you always need a pair of snips. The power cord, tools, the all important thumb drive. I'm gonna set that over here at my computer. Uh, we've got some gloves, a very nice putting knife with a good sharp edge on it. That's always useful. And a USB device. I'm not quite sure what this is. I wonder if this is a Wi-Fi module. We'll have to take a look at that. But for right now, this other stuff will set to the side. Of course, there's uh, the plastic knife, which I really like these for straining the resin down out of the FET bay. And of course, the all-important face mask. And, wow. Separate individual leveling instructions. These can be very useful. And that card can be very useful. And then of course, the regular book itself. So we'll keep that out and that's important. And then all the all important resin filters. So if you have stuff in the bay and you gotta pour it back into the bottle to clean your bay or you've had a boo-boo and a misprint, um, you gotta get all that particulate out. These are great for filtering that out. And they give, they give me a hearty little supply here. Usually they only come with like two or three, but there's maybe 10 here. So that's awesome. And what I usually do is I stick these in a plastic funnel and then use these as strain and then you can just pitch these. So awesome. Well, lots of good stuff here. So, but while the toolkit is cool, let's move to the main attraction. Oh. And there it is. Now like this box, these types of foam, I will actually save some of these because um, they come in handy, like I said, for kit bashing. So yeah, stick around for some of that stuff. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to get this plastic off this beautiful looking machine. And again, when it comes to packaging, Illigo, good job. The la layers of protection here have been just commendable, how these have been, the machine's been protected. Because let's face it, shipping can be uh, rough on devices. I've had printers not survive. And luckily, this guy is looking like it's in great shape. I'm loving the red color. A lot of my stuff is yellow or orange. Uh, the red will match my Halet 1, which is always good. this cover off. Nice, good looking cover. Very solid design, which is good. Ironically, I've had one of these that I've cracked before um, in another printer brand. So, all right, lots of foam, protectorant, that's always good. Here's the build plate. Very nice, 8.9. It's got a protective film that we're gonna to wanna to take off of there. And before I print with this, um, that plate I will probably clean with isopropyl alcohol just to be on the safe side in case there's anything sticky left over from this. And one key difference from the Photon Mono X is the leveling system here. It, this is a two bolt leveling system where the Photon Mono X has the four bolts. Uh, very similar to the Creality printers, where this guy is using a two bolt, which is Elegoo's kind of standard. And also uh, VoxLab uses a similar design. So that'll be interesting once we get that going. Let's get some more of this protective material off here. And let's get this bay lifted off. I'm gonna take a look at the FET bay. Cause we gotta take some polarizers and stuff off anyway. This is nice that the bolts are actually takeaway. Um, it gets really annoying, Creality. Um, Creality's big about this, the bolts are in there and they don't come out. And it can be a little annoying when you're trying to drain this, uh, cause you got the bolts in the way. But this is, looks like it's very well done. Um, it's nicely clean and it's very taut. You can hear the in there. So the FET bay is in very good condition. I'm gonna set that to the side. 
So there are two pieces here. There's a protective film and then there's a polarizer. We don't want to pull off the polarizer. We just want to pull off the protective film. And now comes the important part. We get the book. And take a look at everything we've got here because there is more than I'm used to seeing here. And I want to make sure we're doing this right. So, of course, it goes into standard leveling. Um, so we'll definitely level the machine, get model printing ready. Um, we'll probably use uh, Illigu Shitu Box for that and get their settings so we can copy it into my Shitu Box Pro. Make sure they're the good. Start with the recommended settings and kind of work my way out to my settings. Uh, to finding the right settings, which means I'll be looking at Illigu or not Illigu, I'll be on Facebook, some Facebook forums and stuff like that. Um, I also look around on Reddit um, for recommendations as well. So, all right, so what we need to do is one, take a look at this device. So, I'm not quite sure what this is. So, let's get it out because it's got a USB port and there's a USB port inside that I just pulled the cover off of. So let's find out what this guy is. And this is a mini air purifier 2.0. So awesome, it's a nice air filter, which is good. And I'm betting that this guy, so this is an active charcoal filter, which will help protect against hazard chemicals being in the environment. So. We will get that out of that packaging, we'll slip it back in there, and we'll put it in. Now the only thing I don't like about this is it doesn't show me where it's supposed to go, but seeing this USB port in here, I'm betting that's the only place that really makes sense for it. So but that's really cool. That's a step up from, mono, from the uh, Photon Mono X as well, where there is no filter. Um, that, is a, that is a great addition to the machine. I'm going to totally applaud that. So now let's focus on getting this machine assembled. And by doing so, there's not I have a lot I have to do here, pull the protective film off, and then uh, we'll get the arm on there, I'll need a piece of paper, uh, and we'll get the machine leveled, and then we're going to be ready for resin and printing. Pretty straightforward, not a whole lot here has to be done. So, and of course, if you're looking for parameters and stuff like that, there's plenty, there's actually the suggestions are in here and some recommended default settings to work off of are right in the book. So that is always a good thing. So, and I love the leveling card. Um, okay, so basically the leveling paper needs to go here, which is that leveling instruction, but, as we move forward with that, it's time to add power to the machine. So we're gonna get this guy powered on. Oh, and I forgot a protective film. Meh. <laughs> we'll get rid of that guy. Protective films are nice, but you know, they're not always a huge requirement. Now, the USB port is back here on the back side, so I'm gonna have to take that into account where I place this on my desk. So, because I'll want to be able to access that USB port. Now, luckily, I have a wonderful tool bench that has power built right into it. And at this point, we need the tool bag. So we've got some uh, bolts we got to loosen up there. So specifically we need to loosen both bolts on here, which are not the standard Allen wrench sizes I'm used to seeing for this machine. Oh, they are definitely tough for the first crank, but that's to be expected. But once they're loosened, once you're loosened, you can see the plate will move freely, which is what we want. Then slider in place on the machine. We put it in a position, these are loose, then we hit the home button. And that will 
take the build plate back into the home position. There it goes. Now it's going into the home position. That way this will sit down properly and we can start working on the leveling process. All right, so we've got it pretty much straight on. We want to make sure the plate is straight. So we'll do a little bit of movement there to make sure it's correctly in here. Then we'll start, put our hand on it and start tightening up. We've got that the way we want it because the paper gives the proper proper level so we're not having to do um, do anything there. So now we're ready to um, set Z equals zero and confirm. And manually we're going to hit 10 millimeter and we're going to move this back up so we can place the resin tank back on the printer. Now, one thing that I'll do, I'm going to give this a try first the way it is, but sometimes I will take PTE, PTFE lubricant and spray in here and kind of loosen, spray it over the, uh, the FEP just so the print will not stick so hard, but I'm, that may not be needed right now. So protective film off the bottom of the FEP, you can see that really kind of cleared it up, max to the back. And it should sit down in its spot just like that we put our bolts on and you can guess what we're ready for next we're ready for resin so as far as unboxing this printer and assembly pretty easy we did it not a very long amount of time because um, i don't edit a lot of this out i want you guys to see when i run into a problem and stuff like that kind of the real thing so but all in all We're ready to add resin and do their their actual test print from their thumb drive, which you notice I set right over here. So we will plug that in. I'm gonna look at this tiny little screen real quick and see what we've got. Slicing software, parameter G code, LCD like curable, model Ilgu Saturn SR model for print. And there's the rooks. So that's what we'll print. And when I have that printed, we'll come back and take a look. Catch you guys on the flip side. Okay, it's printing, but I'm gonna go ahead and do the recap. Before this part, you guys will see the final product, but I wanna do the recap of this. Assembly, easy. Packaging, fantastic. Ease of use, well, it looks pretty simple to me. Um, and I'm comparing against a lot of other printers like the Photon Mono X, uh, Creality Halet 1, and a few others. So all in all, this is a very sleek design. I love the charcoal filter. That one's kind of impressed me a little bit. No one else, at least like no one else with a bigger scale printer like this has that. So that is a good thing because they're caring about your health, which is important. So all in all, looks like a fantastic printer. Hopefully the prints came out okay in the sec segment before because I haven't seen them yet because it's doing it right now, but I wanted to pre-record this. But all in all, this looks like a fantastic machine. And for the price point on Amazon, these are running about $519. You can get the Saturn for about 400 and I think it was like 480. So there is a price difference between them, but all in all, this looks like a fantastic machine. It was very easy to put together and the instructions were very well done. So if you guys enjoyed this content, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you're new here or if you've come here before and haven't hit it, hit it, hit it now. Then if you enjoyed this content, make sure you hit that like button, let us know. And if you have any questions about the machine, definitely comments down below. And we will have a versus hopefully between this and the Photon Mono X once I have them both purring like kittens. So thank you guys. See you in the next video.